بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين اللهم صل وسلم على محمد وعلى ال محمد ومن تبع احسان الى يوم الدين اما بعد all the thanks and praises for Allah the most high and the most merciful and i ask Allah the most merciful to send peace and blessings upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and whoever follows Prophet Muhammad in good deeds until the day of resurrection. Now in this fourth lesson of the important lessons of or with which regards to the Muslim Ummah, we're on the 11th lesson and this entails invalidators of the prior. They are eight has a sheikh has mentioned, may Allah have mercy and blessings upon the Sheikh. Now, let's go to number one. It's intentionally talking with awareness and knowledge. So, again, this, these are things that invalidates the prior, invalidators of the prior. The first is intentionally talking with awareness and knowledge. As for forgetfulness and ignorance, persons that do or carry out this action, inshallah, it's, it will be forgiven. So, when one is praying, he should not talk and do other things outside of the salah. He should not laugh, he should not eat, he should not drink. He should cover his private parts. Any uncovered part of your body that is seeing will make the salat invalid. So, for the men, Muslim men, there are certain parts that has to be covered within Salah. If these parts are not covered, your Salah will become invalid. For the woman, there are different rulings, where to cover and so forth. The sixth is excessive diversion from the way, the Qibla, or the direction of prior. The seventh is excessive movement in the Salah. The eighth is null the nullification of ablution. So these are the eight things that will invalidate one's prior. Now let's go to the twelfth lesson. These are conditions of wudu. The first is one has to be Muslim. He has to bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah and that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon Prophet Muhammad, is the last and final prophet. The second is intellect. He has to be of a mature age. He can't be a child who is unaware of what's happening. He has to be fully, you know, grown mentally. The third is maturity of the child in differentiating between various matters. Or I should say, intellect, sorry, intellect meaning that he's not crazy, yes. And maturity of a child meaning he can differentiate between different issues in life. So intellect should be, he's not crazy. The fourth is the intention, having the intention to make wudu. The, the fifth is continuity of the intention while making wudu. So while making wudu, the person should not tenwi or yenwi. He should not make the intention to break wudu and come back and do wudu again. He should have his intention to do all the sequent of wudu in the proper order that the Prophet ﷺ has said it. The sixth is the removal of the, ne the removal of things that necessitates wudu. The seventh is al istinja. This is when one cleans one private part with water or istijmar. This is when one uses paper, leaves, tissue to clean him or herself from their natural discharges. The eighth is water must be pure and acquired permissibly. So these are, or this is the eighth, so for conditions of wudu. The ninth is 
The removal of things that prevent water from reaching the body. So if one has, for example, cutex or things that makes water impossible to get to the skin, one has to remove this before making wudu. If not, your wudu is considered invalid. And that's the ninth. The tenth is the arrival of the time. Meaning that the prior for salat, the time for salat has to be the arrival of the time of prayer for those who continually lose their ablution. For example, due to release of gas, urine, or reasons that nullify ablution. So these are the th ten conditions of wudu. Now let's go through things that make or obligatory acts of wudu. They are six. The first is washing the face, including rinsing of the mouth with water and cleansing the nose or the nostril. The second is washing the two hands up to the elbow and including the elbow. The third is wiping the whole head, including the two ears. The fourth is washing the two feet, including the ankles. The fifth is doing the ablution in the prescribed sequence. So you can't wash your, wash your feet before you wash your face. You can't do anything that's not in the way of the sequence of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, while making ablution in the way that the Prophet وسلم, did. The sixth is to ensure each body is washed properly without delaying and having another being dried. So he, the person, for example, making wudu, he washes hair, he waits two, three minutes to wash another part. That will make a, a, one or two parts of the limb drying before another. And you can't have this. You should try to complete your wudu in the shortest time possible. So the sixth again is ensuring each body is washed without delay. And so forth. Now, some of the errors that I've seen with our Muslim brothers are like, one, they rush their wudu. It's not a sequence. It's not a spiritual sequ um, spiritual sequence, if I can say this, spiritual act of worship they're doing. They're just rushing to get this done, to go and do something. And Allah knows best. This is a spiritual act that we should concentrate on complete it properly as all the Prophet Sallallahu and not doing overboard, doing excessive. And the other thing is washing parts of the body and and not washing it completely. Some people, they rush their wudu so quickly that they do not wash certain portion of their legs or their arms. This will make your wudu invalid. There was a situation where the Prophet ﷺ saw a guy that washed his leg and the, 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 the surface which was not washed was about the, the width of a coin and the Prophet ﷺ ordered him to redo his wudu. And the Prophet ﷺ reordered him to redo his wudu and he also warned him to be careful of the fire. So these are very important. So we have to ensure that we're doing our actions, especially anything related to religion, according to the way of the Prophet. Make sure that we wash properly. Make sure that we pray slowly, calmly, thinking about the greatness of our Lord. And we be patient in this. There's nothing better than Salah. There's nothing. Salat is the link between you and your Lord. Salat is what makes your heart at peace. Salat is what gives you happiness in this world and the thereafter. Salat is what gives you success. Salat is what gives you mental tranquility. Salat is what helps your thoughts. And I should remind my brothers and sisters that they should Work utmostly to pray thulath al-layl, salat in the third part of the night. This is when Allah the Most High comes to the last heavens to ask his servants, what, does they, what do they want? 
and so forth, according to the hadith. So I encourage you to do your salat on time, fulfill the needs of wudu, fulfill the needs of salat itself, observe what should be done, increase in your tranquility and your, 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 your heart's actions, where you focus properly on salah in order to worship your Lord better, and so forth. Now, we'll stop here for today and we'll continue in our next sitting. Please tune in to or another lesson. Thank you for listening. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Mm -hmm.